The DICE model is a system that incorporates the different aspects of the linkages between the economy and the earth system and the climate system. It represents economic growth, emissions, climate change, damages in a way that you can project it over time and you can trace out different policies and their implications. So you can see what are good policies, what are poor policies, and what are the best policies that we can follow to slow climate change. The major insight of economics in this area, and this is where the DICE model has come in, is to suggest that we need to raise the price of carbon dioxide emissions that the public faces, not just the public, the consumers like you and me, but also firms and governments, and not just in our countries in Spain and the United States and Europe, but around the world. The key point of economics is that we are underpricing our natural resources. We are giving away, so to speak, carbon emissions for free. And we need to make sure that people pay the price, that's to say the cost of these damages that this imposes on society in the future. So the major insight of economics is that we need to pay to reduce these emissions that will slow climate change in the future. The, the Paris Agreement does not go far enough. It's largely an aspirational agreement where countries have gotten together and both announced lofty goals for the globe as a whole, a two degree limit, and then announced national policies. But the two are not aligned. So the national policies, if you add them up, do not get to the two degree tar target that the countries are aspiring for. The, um, the policies themselves, are good policies for countries. Each of the countries has announced them, the US for regulations, Europe for prices, China for a cap and trade system. But if you add them all up, they're not gonna come close to achieving the goals that we set for ourselves. Well, I think that the opposition to climate change science and climate change policy is largely political. It's motivated, for example, in this country by politicians who are taking their support from conservative groups. But if you actually look at the scientific evidence behind the climate skeptics, it's very weak. I analogize it to the anti-smoking movement of the last of many, many decades ago, where people just refuse to look at the evidence that smoking causes cancer. Now it's true, it's, there's, it's complicated. If I smoke, I might not get cancer. I might not get it next year. I might get it in 10 years or 20 years. But all the evidence for smoking as for climate change suggests it's very dangerous for our countries, not just for the poor countries, but for the rich countries as well. So what I would do is there's nothing other than to show people what the evidence is. The evidence is getting stronger every year and we need to really take steps to come to grips with that and to take policies such as raising uh, carbon prices to meet this challenge.